Let's get. Um, <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm calling to order this meeting of the design subcommittee of the Jones Library Building Committee. We are proceeding pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, meeting um, remotely. Um, I'm going to ask you to signify your presence at the meeting. When I call you, just say yes or Sharon. Here. George. Here. Christine. Here. And we are joined, and I'm Austin, I'm, I'm here, and we're joined by Ken Romero from uh, Colliers. Uh, the first item of business is the election of the chair of this subcommittee. And I would love it if someone would nominate, make a nomination to serve as chair of the subcommittee. I would like to nominate Christine Gray Mullen. Fabulous. I know she's excited to hear that. <laughs> Uh, are there other, are there other nominations? Okay. So all in, so what I'm going to do is again, ask you individually to vote. Yes. Sharon. Yes. George. Yes. Christine. Yes. Austin votes. Yes. Christine, the, the gavel is yours. Oh boy. <laughs> um, well, I'm fighting with my other computer right now to have my agenda up. If you could clue me in on just what the next agenda item is, that would be Re great. Review the subcommittee charge. Oh, we can do that. Oh, and the, okay, I can do this. All right. There you go. <laughs> um, and that would be Sharon. Um, so yeah, so the design subcommittee charge is in the packet. Uh, it's on the town's website, maybe on the library's website. Um, and so here we all are. I thought if, if you all would allow me, I thought I could share my screen and go over um, uh, basically a really quick update of how we got to where we are today and, and in how we're going to move forward what we have in front of us is that okay with you all austin, sounds great oh right. there's a hand austin so i think if if it if it's okay sharon or christine i think you should read the charge you should just read it now okay I, I know it's available but we might have people who are participants who would not have seen it so if you could read it that would be great sure in addition to the chair of the JLBC, as a voting ex officio member, the design subcommittee shall have three voting members appointed by the chair of the Jones Library Building Committee. The focus of the design subcommittee shall be to make design recommendations to the JLBC during the schematic and design development phases of the project, along with refinements to the programming. The design subcommittee shall work with the project designers and OPM on all aspects of the design of the building project, investigate and recommend to the JLBC temporary locations, taking into consideration the recommendations of the outreach subcommittee, Massachusetts Historic Commission, Amherst Historic Commission, Disability Access Advisory Committee, Jones Library Sustainability Committee, Burnett Art Gallery Committee, and the Jones Library Gardens Advisory Committee revise the previous schematics to address concerns identified by the Jones Library staff and the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for consideration by the JLBC. Respond to questions or concerns raised by the JLBC. The design subcommittee shall provide input on the designs proposed by the design team and explanations for the recommendations to the JLBC during the schematic and design development phases. End here, end Thank scene. <laughs> Um, are there any concerns or questions about this uh, subcommittee charge? Um, I'm not seeing any. So at this point, this has been finalized with the town and we just move forward with this. Sharon. Okay. 
Okay, uh, I'll share my screen. I want to bring you to so. So here we are. Um, so this graphic that I've got on the screen is how I envision this project. All decisions we make must lead to the big yellow circle in the middle. So we're, we're, our goal is to build a safe, functional, and welcoming to all library. And so in my mind, um, I also see many different special interests, and I, I don't use that phrase in a pejorative way. Um, so these are the smaller blue and green circles uh, surrounding the, the big yellow circle. So these are all the different program elements that, that we as a subcommittee will be considering. And as you all become intimately more involved with these designs, you're gonna see how difficult a job our architects have. So we're limited financially, our footprint is limited, we're limited by zoning setbacks and, and having to work with the charm and idiosyncrasies of this 1928 building. It's, it's just not easy. And so we've got a lot of square pegs that just don't fit into these uh, round holes. Uh, so it's just, it's a complicated uh, project that we're working on. And please hold. Go. Why aren't you scrolling? Okay. So in this in this handout, uh, back in 2017, uh, um, a group of us met with members of the MBLC. So this was after we had been awarded the grant. We were put on the wait list, and the normal process is for the MBLC to share with our design team um, their comments about our designs that we submitted in the grant uh, application. Um, so the M MBLC, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, they're very similar to the MSBA, but it's a little less structured. But that being said, all of the decisions that we make, that the building committee makes, has to be run by the MBLC. The MBLC has to approve our designs. They're not going to approve any decisions that we want to make that will adversely affect the goals that are in that big yellow uh, circle. It's got to be safe. It's got to be functional. And it has to be welcoming to everybody. So uh, I'm not going to read everything that's on this sheet. Uh, so for example, the MBLC did require that we moved the large meeting room. Uh, originally, the architects had it on the first floor, and now it's in the garden level. Um, uh, ground level comments included uh, several several thoughts they had about special collections. They wanted to see glass walls for the exhibit room, um, more table space in the workroom, uh, things like that. On the first floor, they commented about the circulation desk. At the time, it was in a different location than where it is now. Um, so we've made changes to that. Um, the, the existing, the staircase, the, uh, the 1928 main staircase in the front of the building, that is going to stay. Um, but the MBLC had concerns that it's, it's creating a pinch point there because many patrons will come in through the front door. Um, the young adult room needs to have double doors, things like that. Whoops. Uh, in the children's room, they had a lot of feedback there. They wanted better sight lines. Uh, at the time, it, it was a long walk from the front door to the children's room, and that has been updated. Uh, and at the time, the circulation desk was a, was a little circular, so it was a little awkward. And, and since then, that's been changed. Uh, second floor, sight lines. Sight lines are a big thing. Um, the stacks were too high. The restrooms were tucked away at that point, and, and that's been changed to, since. Um, and then on the third floor, they were talking about the boardroom being able to uh, be used as a staff conference room, um, and they were concerned about the size of the staff lounge. So um, now I want to show you an updated set of designs, which does include staff recommendations. So these um, these designs that I'm going to show you now um, have been sent to the architects, and I, I feel like this is our starting point. 
So I'm going to start on the second floor. You probably can't read uh, read the words. This isn't high resolution, um, so don't don't try don't squint your eyes. I'll I'll just talk you through it. Uh, so I'm starting on the second floor, and uh, some of the highlights include here where my cursor is. Staff have added staff offices here because one of the concerns having to do with this rear room, which is the adult nonfiction, there was no staff oversight at the time. So we put offices here so there, there will be um, some eyes happening there. Um, over here, uh, it will be the reference desk. We've got computers. Uh, this is administration here in this darker bluey purple color. Up here, up front, this is all, um, these are going to be the adult reading rooms. It'll be a very quiet space. In fact, this entire floor will be a very quiet floor. Um, the one big change that staff are really advocating for is ESL being moved to this floor. Uh, they wanted, so we need classrooms for the literacy project, which will also be shared with our ESL department and the tutor rooms uh, along with the ESL collection. Um, and again, here there's a couple more staff offices for more staff oversight of this space. So um, the staff did, when, when they were making these suggestions, uh, they did take into account the square footages. Um, so we know they will fit here. It'll just be up to the architects to see whether or not, you know, aesthetically they'll like it. Um, down to the first floor. So down here where this big cloud is, that's that's the main door that, that we have now, the front door onto Amity Street. So you would walk in. On this side, this pinkish salmon-y color is, that's the automated materials handling system. It's where the director's office is right now. The reason it's located here is because um, you need to have an exterior book drop and an interior book drop. And you need those two spaces to be close to each other so that the conveyor belts on this handling system are minimum. The number of conveyor belts, the, the length is minimized. Um, the smaller it is, the, the less maintenance that will have to occur over time. So that's why it's here. All of this space in the yellow is the entire children's room. So the children's room uh, is being proposed to be partially in the 1928 building and partially to have its new, the new uh, addition um, with a children's activities room and circulation desk. And so there's the, there's the kids room all in the yellow. The teen space is here and in the orange, um, they'll have their own space, glass walls. So we can see in, we can see what they're doing. There's also um, young adult librarians in there overseeing. The adult circulation desk is here in this um, more, more of this pink. And, and this is also a space, so we, we've named it a gathering space. It was originally a cafe space. And I, I want everybody to understand that it's a place, you know, the flooring is hard. It's a hard surface, so it's easy to clean. This is where, this is gonna be a noisy space. This is people walking through, checking out their books, talking to their neighbors. This is where there will be cafe table type seating so people can bring their own food and drink and study and chat and whatever it is that they wanna do. It's not gonna be a place where the library is going to be selling stuff. That, that's, not the, that's not the goal, it's bring your own. There's the first floor. And then I want to bring you down to the, gar the garden level. So here, sp special collections is all on this uh, right-hand side. Um, we have tech services here. Uh, tech services, that's our department that processes all of our materials. Uh, the benefit of it being here is that the delivery person, FedEx and UPS, will be able to come in through this existing door. We call it the barn door now. Um, and uh, so deliveries will be able to come in there. That's where all of our new books are delivered. Uh, again, special collections. Now, at the front of this building, this is all maintenance and storage. This is all underground. Uh, there aren't there aren't windows here, so we were lucky that we got to put all of the, you know, mechanicals down there. Up here, so this is the door. An, another what I envision to be another primary 
entrance, really, um, because the CVS parking lot is back here. Uh, I think that a lot of people are going to want to park in the CVS lot, whether it's a garage or not, and just walk through the garden and come in through this door. Uh, one of the things the architects needs to need to do is is really focus more on making this a beautiful grand entrance. Um, and they they know they have work to do on that. But right here in the big blue. That's our large meeting room that was moved from the first floor down to this garden level. It will be available nights and weekends. We'll be able to lock off this floor and people will just come and go this way and they won't be able to get to the other floors in the building. Um, there are restrooms here. There's a small meeting room, which is the Amherst room. That's down here, which can also be used nights and weekends. Uh, and the Burnett Art Gallery. Again, we also want to be able to use that nights and weekends for receptions and things. Uh, right now, another important piece of this puzzle is this are the Civil War tablets. And they have been planned to go here. Um, Again, we're, we're looking for, we haven't gotten much farther in this process, so we haven't been able to, the architects haven't been able to really run wild with how a display could work here for the Civil War tablets, but that's the goal right now. Um, I, I, so I think, I think that's everything, that this is where we'll be starting. We do have to hire um, the architects. And, and the first thing we'll have to do is meet with the MBLC uh, to, to do exactly this, to go over our designs and to hear their feedback. Um, I think that's where we are. Maybe, uh, so my next slide actually um, brings us to a timeline of tasks. And I thought I would hand it over to Ken to talk about that. But maybe I should I should answer questions first, if you guys have questions. That sounds good. <clears throat> Thanks, Sharon. Obviously, yeah. a lot of thought has gone into this. Um, and there seems to be reasons for almost everything why something is somewhere or not somewhere. Thanks for that. Um, does anyone else on the committee here have a question for Sharon about what she's Shown us. I see Austin has a hand. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Sharon, it would be useful if you could just remind everybody of the status of these drawings. So your presentation referenced things that quote the staff added. So I want to make sure that everybody understands what these drawings are and what it means, quote, that the staff added them. So could you just remind us what is the status of these drawings? What does it mean when you say, quote, the staff added? And um, could you also just talk a little bit about the relationship with MBLC going forward? So you said we meet with the MBLC uh, to review these 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 diagrams, could you talk a little bit about what MBLC involvement will be going forward? Sure. Uh, okay. That those were a lot of questions. So, okay. So what I mean by the staff added. So, um, the designs that we have posted on the website are. are are where they stand uh, with with the architects officially, and that's those are the plans that the MBLC have seen. But because we ran out of time and we didn't have a contract with the architects, um, the architects couldn't do any additional work. It didn't make sense because you know town council had to still do the vote, and then there was the referendum, so additional work needed to be done. That being said, um, there were several things missing from the latest architectural designs, including the Burnett Art Gallery um, and, and added spaces for special collections. So the pause in the work that the architects were doing gave staff a chance to sit down, gosh, probably a year ago at this point, um, and we worked through all of the, the issues that we were having. And we are focused really 100%, 99% on functionality. Um, so for example, the other, in the other designs, uh, I think ESL was on this garden level. And 
it wasn't making sense for the ESL department to be on that garden level. And I'm not even sure why. Um, clustering ESL, ESL would be ideal. I'd have to go back and look at my notes for all of these reasons. Uh, George wants to raise his hand. Go for it. Um, I think one of the main reasons was uh, th they were concerned about accessibility as far as being able to find it and ensuring that everything was together in one place. Because when we had them in the basement, I believe the collection was in a different location than the, the tutor rooms. That makes sense. That makes Sharon, sense. Sharon, uh, Christine, may I clarify my question a little bit? Absolutely. So um, I just want to make sure that we all understand that what we're looking at are not the approved schematics. That's very important for people to understand. These are not the approved schematics. What you are showing us is, as you nicely described it, a kind of uh, something in between. The question of what, of what this committee and the building committee think about any of these proposals uh, is yet to be addressed. So it, the, that the staff thinks that this ought to be here or that ought to be there is just that. It's the staff's thinking. That's is that right? Correct. Yeah. OK, because I just want everybody to understand these are not the approved schematics and these are not binding in any way on the design subcommittee or the Jones Library building committee. And so at some point, once the architects are hired, this committee is going to have to look at these things and say what we think about them. Yeah, that's a that's an important clarification. The staff just had so many concerns with the the approved schematics that e even the architects admit were not complete. Um, that the staff just said, "Okay, we're going to give our recommendations," and and here's the here was where they were going with it. Um, you had also asked about MBC M MBLC involvement, so they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be our best buds for the next three years. They have to approve everything. Um, so we're going to start by meeting with them and then they will let us go and do our work with the architects and then we will have to meet with them again. So probably before, um, bef so we still have to finish schematics Then we're going to go into design development. So, you know, at each at each milestone, we will have to check in with them. They will say yes or no and, and make recommendations for changes. Uh, the building committee, the town manager, the library trustees will have to approve everything. Um, all at the same time where, you know, thankfully we have this amazing outreach committee that will also be, you know, gathering input from the community uh, and with the help of the OPM and the architects to be able to say, you know, basically from day one, from today, uh, these are the kinds of things that can be changed and these are the kinds of things that can't be changed. Um, so we don't get people's hopes up. Um, and who is the we that will meet with the MBLC? I, I would think this committee, the design committee. Great. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. Any other questions? I just uh, wanted to make a comment and uh, two comments. One is that um, even though for some of you all, this has been a very long process, but I just want to point out that this is good. This is a good thing that staff and, and others have had a long time to think about this and think about function and um, where things need to go because the other opposite would have been sometimes there isn't much time. And um, as Sharon was pointing out, it's hard to remember all the whys as time goes on. Um, but, uh, and I'm sure you all were very good with documentation stuff and if need be, and many minds, sometimes somebody remembers something. But anyways, this is, this is a good thing. And I see a lot of thought in this. And um, hopefully as you explain things, um, it will help the public come up to speed too, because sometimes they're late in the game and they're like, well, I, want, I thought this would be here, but there's already answers to come that way. And just as um, kind of like an engineer, I wanted to admit, I'm not sure who did these drawings. And I, I recommend that on every page of every one of these, always you have who made it and the date, 
because as these keep evolving and changing, you'll, I remember this on planning board, you'll get confused. Is this the old one, the before the, so um, I know these become the record, but maybe even if another set could be added to our minutes or whatever that have the date on it. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's funny because these are, you know, these are just staff drafts, so they're not yeah. real. They are, they're all dated in my files, but yeah, this is the first time that it's been, you know, out in the public eye. So yes, moving forward. Absolutely. And, you know, certainly I'm just a librarian. <laughs> Every, everything that the architects do, everything is dated and, and all of that. So Right. Right. Thank and you. I get, and that's the beauty of digital. There is the metadata and the dates in there, but I just meant like all of a sudden paper copies start to float and yes. especially with the public and then it gets confusing. So. That thank was, you. Um, live in the dream. Um, but thank you. That was great. Are there any other questions for Sharon on this? Austin, you got any more? <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I do see a hand up. <laughs> well, I just want to be clear again. Um, there are many things in this, these, uh, these diagrams that Sharon has uh, pointed out uh, that do reflect, Christine, as you said, long thinking by the board of trustees and the feasibility committee. I mean, there are lots of, uh, lots of people. And this was um, kind of uh, the, the architect's version of not yet final, but the architect's version of schematics, which evolved uh, o over time. There are things that are shown in this, in these schematics that I think all of us might have thoughts about, um, you know, whether they're the right things or the or the wrong things. So uh, we we didn't get the final schematics, and that's going to be a, a next task for I think uh, for for all of us. And Sharon, um, the now the now the Goodwin room, uh, what is uh, what is anticipated to be on that level? Oh, so yeah, so I don't, I don't have that to share right now, but yeah, um, that hasn't changed. Uh, the, the third floor, the top floor, the Goodwin room, as you said, is the boardroom that, that hasn't changed. And then on the other side of the stairwell top floor, that's all the, the staff kitchen lounge area. Nice. Um, are there any other questions or we'll move on with the agenda and if Sharon, if you're all done, give me a thumbs up. Yeah. All right. Great. So um, that was uh, design overview item four. We'll go to five, which is process overview. And we welcome Guy Romeo, our own um, OPM. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. So uh, Ken Romeo with uh, Colliers. Oh, and, Ken, uh, sorry. I, I, my brain, you, I just, I'm, you can all tell I'm sick. So I'm doing, yeah. And That's right. Thank you, Ken. And I know because it's so the public, there's Ken and Ken. So it's, I yes. just really want to change your name, I think is what it is. But no but, problem. But it was good. We stayed with Ken to Ken. So, <laughs> all right. And, uh, so, as as do you need as, uh, to share your screen at all or anything? Are you no, set up no, to do I was just, Okay. No, I was just going to talk here uh, briefly. Um, so, uh, as you said, it's the process, and uh, you guys hit on it several times. Uh, the first step is going to be hiring the design firm, and then uh, you know finishing as I as I'm putting it in my head, and uh, you know it might be something for the committee to consider. I'm calling uh, the previous programming phase, and then we're going to move into the schematic phase, just to make that clear break, like you were mentioning with the uh, you know dates and drawings, just to make it a little easier for all of us. So in my head, I look at what was in the past as the programming phase, and now we're gonna refine and move into the schematic phase. And uh, you know, with that, it's gonna take a, a few weeks. You know, it's gonna, you know, I know uh, there's been uh, several discussions, but anywhere from 14 to 20 weeks, it's not unusual to have, you know, in a process for this, as uh, was mentioned by uh, Sharon, we're going to have several meetings. We're going to have several approvals. So it adds on. The design team might have only eight to 10 weeks worth of work to do, but there's going to be all these meetings in between. And then naturally, not only approvals, but an estimate that will go on that we'll have to work our way through. That's going to take approximately three weeks. So just so everybody has an understanding there of it. And then we'll move into the schematic design. 
as uh, you guys were noting, you know, and uh, then that'll lead us into the design development. And that there is going to take, uh, you know, on the architectural side, somewhere around 14 to 16 weeks is, you know, our best guess at this point. And then again, you know, estimating is going to take about three weeks. And then if there's any value management, you know, value engineering that needs to go on, that takes another week or two, the uh, review processes and approvals in there. So you can understand, you know, that one's going to be a 20 plus uh, week time frame. And then we'll move into CDs. And again, that can take anywhere from 18 to 22 weeks to finalize the construction documents, finalize the specifications and uh, move through everything there. And then we'll move into the bidding process. And as you can see, you know, weeks are adding up quickly. So uh, the bidding process will take anywhere from eight to 14 weeks, depending on the approach that's uh, decided to uh, move forward on and uh, the timing of that. And then we'll get into the construction. And that's, you know, at this point gonna be somewhere in that year, year and a half range uh, it, but naturally can't fully understand that until the design is, uh, you know, developed further because we're just in the programming phase. So uh, as Sharon noted, I can't, uh, can't emphasize it enough. MBLSC, uh, they're going to be really, uh, you know, an intricate part of this and uh, have, you know, a lot of weight in the discussions. We have to make sure that we pay attention to the details that they offer us in the insight. They are another level of experts on this, not just the design team. So, you know, everything that they offer, you know, uh, we need to make sure we weigh and uh, understand fully what they're getting at and uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. They are uh, really an open uh, group and uh, will offer a lot of insight. You know, a lot of times they just offer comments and you might be thinking, why is that? Don't be shy as to ask why. And uh, that actually, as everybody here knows, you know, everybody in the few meetings I've been to isn't shy. So it'll open up and create that, uh, you know, open design and thorough thought process, which will enhance the project also. So with that, I don't know if there's any uh, questions, you know, related to process. That's again, just a really big overview. And, uh, but uh, I'll open it up to any questions, comments, concerns. I don't see any hands yet, but I'll ask. Um, so it said like the timeline. So what would we expect? Because I'm thinking about um, a couple agenda items later when we're thinking about our schedule, um, which mm -hmm. we can talk about it more than in figuring out a dates or dates. But what? how do you see the next month or two playing out for this group? At this point, uh, the big thing is going to be, you know, we're finding uh, at this point, I'm reaching out to a few people and trying to understand uh, the designer, um, you know, procurement approach that we're going to have to take. So that's the uh, big step at this point. And uh, that should hopefully be resolved. I'm hoping in the next three, four business days at most. And then, uh, you know, so that covers, let's say a week, you know, if it stretches into, uh, you know, the end of next week. And then uh, it's really going to be, you know, hopefully uh, we have the approach and then we can, uh, you know, step off from there into the SD phase. But uh, there are a few things out there that we have to hear back from the attorney general and the uh, uh, on. Right. So take care of business, take care of money. Um, and then when do you think we would get something to review or to on in this group? Uh, it's going to depend on how things go with the attorney general. Because uh, okay. at this point, we, you know, uh, there's, there's a discussion going on there on the procurement process. So. Okay. So we, we don't have anything pressing is what you're saying, probably. No, uh, there's, there's okay. one pressing item. It's in my court. Uh, Sharon and I have talked about it and I'm reaching out and trying to resolve that now. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Um, all yep. of that. Does anyone have any questions for, for Ken? <laughs> All right, I don't see any. So thank you for that update. Um, I think now it says IE item six is Q and A. I didn't make this agenda, so I'm not sure what that means. Either Sharon or Austin, can you? Um, I I didn't know how this would end up flowing, yeah, so no I feel like we've we've already done the Q and A. So great. I just didn't want to. You know, I'm, all pistons are not firing here. Um, item eight is topics not anticipated by the chair. I didn't anticipate any of this. So, um, <laughs> does someone else have something to add to that? 
I don't see any hands. Um, public comment. I have not looked. Do we have anyone out there? We do. And I see one hand that is up. I don't know if it was up before, but I'll ask the public. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Do any of y'all have a question that you'd like to ask someone in this group? Uh, again, I'm only seeing one hand, Bob, Pam. And um, can we, uh, do we just unmute him or how does, I don't know how this one works here. I believe I'm unmuted. Ah, there you are. Welcome, Mr. Pam. Thank you. Um, the question has to do with public uh, participation in this process. And there are people who I know who are interested in both the historic portions of the building. Um, I know there are people who have been talking about the, the outside design of the building. Um, there may be comments about uh, the proposals for inside the building. Um, so I just would like to have some clarity as to how that gets incorporated into it because this is a very uh, tight timeline. Uh, it's also uh, going to be difficult to get everything done in the time that we have. Um, so that, that's my question. Thank you for your question. Um, and who here would like to, uh, or no, just, I don't, all right, so the, oh, Sharon, do I see your hand? Yeah, I, th I thought I could start and then I'm going to throw it over to Ken. <laughs> so I, I feel like so much of it uh, depends on, so the architects are going to start, uh, we'll have an initial discussion with the MBLC, and then it'll be up to the architects and to the OPM to really tell us, hey, this can change, this can't, and, you know, and everything in between. Ken, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Typically what we'll do is, uh, you know, have uh, design review meetings. And uh, then, you know, uh, during the schematic phase, I'd envision that we'd have probably two where you'd uh, invite, you know, um, public input and thought to at least uh, be able to provide something. And, uh, you know, with that, there would be parameters, like Sharon said, and actually we can't change structure, um, you know, existing um, <clears throat> historical items that need to be maintained, those type of things we'd, you know, we'd talk about. And then if there are programming, as Sharon was touching on, you know, I'll say adjacencies that are required and, you know, uh, infrastructure issues, whether it's mechanical, electrical, plumbing, those type of things that naturally would, uh, you know, cause, cause and effect type items. But yeah, we can we can definitely have a discussion. Um, thank you. And if I can just build on Mr. Pam's question, um, and this is because we're a new group here, our subcommittee, where can the public anticipate or be watching for meetings where they're going to be able to have some kind of, like, is it going to be with us in the design subcommittee or will those public meetings be when after we sort of say, like, we've reviewed it and are making recommendations and sending it to the larger group and the larger group will handle the um, public comment? Or are we going to try to do it in both? I, I how, You know, Ken, this is probably you a little bit. You've experienced these in other places. How do you see this working in our world? Yeah, typically. Typically, it would go to the building committee because you'd want uh, the building committee, everybody to have the availability and the input themselves and understand exactly what the question is or the concern that's being raised by, you know, the public. So okay. typically here, you know, things would be brought forward and, you know, brought to that group. But then the overview uh, would be provided by the design team there. And then we can invite, uh, you know, input by the public. Right, so that's important for us to structure. Uh, and Austin, I'll go back to you in a sec. Um, is so um, the public can come and they'll learn a lot from coming to the, these design subcommittee meetings. But this won't necessarily be the place where we are, you know, getting everyone. It would be better to get the public and the building um, committees feedback more at the same time and to keep it organized. So um, maybe somehow we can. I know we're going to have a website or web page or something. We should make that a little clear on for the public. So expectations are sort of set, like where they're gathering information and where they'll more likely have um, their place to give wanted input. Um, uh, Austin, you had your hand. Yeah. 
Thank you, Christine. Um, I just want to remind us that we have a subcommittee on outreach and mm -hmm. that we are going to benefit from the work of that other committee as it thinks about how to uh, involve communities and others and people in the community in this process. So the question that Bob asks um, is in one sense ours to think about, but really in another sense is for the other subcommittee to think about how to reach out, how to make sure that the public is involved, that particular communities that have particular interests are involved, and in the charge to our committee that Sharon helpfully read, uh, we're going to receive recommendations from the outreach committee about things that we can and should um, do. Um, and at the end of the day, we'll, I assume, we'll follow or, or have a chance to review the recommendations of that um, outreach subcommittee about what it is that with this group and the building committee, the whole building committee, needs to do to make sure that people feel that they're fully informed, fully engaged, and that they've been fully heard. Excellent point. So true. Um, and uh, I think as the next few meetings for both us and the outreach committee happen, um, a lot of this will become much more clear and hopefully clear to everybody else too. Um, so thank you, Mr. Uh, Pam, for your question. That was very helpful. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Um, so I'm assuming there's no one else there who wants to ask something. Um, and I don't see any, oh, somehow I um, skipped over Number seven, I'm doing great today. Regular meeting schedule. So before we all leave, um, I'm just gonna ask Ken, when, and anyone else, but when do you think we should meet next? Again, it comes down to the uh, discussion with the AG. So I think uh, to schedule a meeting for two weeks, and then if uh, there is uh, you know action that we can carry it, but I think it's easier to cancel a meeting than it is to, you know, schedule one quickly. So that that's my input on it. Okay. Um, so two weeks sounds reasonable to schedule something. And if today's Friday the fourth, um, that would be the 18th. Um, I'm traveling that day. I would rather it not be that I don't have to fly till later in the day, but um, if we could, so I guess there's two points here I'm throwing out to everyone. Um, our Friday's good, our Friday morning's good. We could still sort of stick to that, but I have a problem with the 18th or does anyone have a other preferred day? Especially you, Ken, because I know you're, you know, fitting us in all the time, but um, any thoughts on that? And could we slide it? I mean, so I guess if, if I'm asking not to do the 18th, is there another day the next week we could do, or could it wait till the 25th? I don't know. I would be good with the 25th. <clears throat> and mornings work best for me. Okay. What about the rest of you all? How would, um, Ken, do you think it's okay if we wait till the 25th? Oh, absolutely. I was just talking okay. about two weeks. Great. Just just as a, you know, a, a round easy one, that's all. Then I would appreciate that. So uh, if I threw out the 25th at 9 a.m., how would that work with the other members? I see George is good, Austin's good, Sharon, you're- Yeah, so if we uh, do that, can we, can I put in my calendar starting on the 25th every, you know, two weeks from there? That was gonna be my next question. So um, if we're good on the 25th, um, the next would be, oh my God, can it really be April? <laughs> How is this even, that would be April 8th and then yep. we have the 22nd of April. So we sort of, we could structure those next three for now. Is that, and then of course we'll check in at the next meeting, make sure this is still working for people. So, um, right. we've got those three and they'll be at nine. 
Okay, I think that's all I have. Anything else, last things, or should we just adjourn? Adjourn. Okay. And I'm I'm one. I know Austin. Where I just say, if everyone's good with it, well, let's just adjourn, and we don't actually have to be too proper on this this subcommittee. But so um, I'll see you all at the next meeting. Thank you for coming. Thank you for IT and minute taking. Always appreciate that, Angela. And um, have a good weekend, everyone. Hope you feel better, Chris. Sorry. Uh, yes, feel better. It's been a rough month. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>